Mouse started freaking out on me. <laughs> Ninety-five nine KCKL. Good morning to you, East Texas. I'm John, and I'm here with the gentleman from Caldwell Banker. How are you guys doing today? Always good, John. How are you? Doing great. So, uh, you guys got anything uh, interesting for us today? Oh, as always, you know. Good morning, Cedar Creek Lake. It's been an under wonderful week here, and you know this is always my favorite time of year. Uh, lake's full, making it easy to navigate to any of them. Uh, you know, fishing spots you're trying to get to back in there. Uh, the sun's been out, and if I ever have a free moment, I've tried to get out in my garden, do a little relaxing. I know everybody's been busy lately. That's going to be a harder thing to get to. Yeah, I've got my garden going. I've got I've got one tomato on my two <laughs> tomato plants, and I've got let's see, I planted probably about two hundred radishes. I've successfully got one to pop up out of the ground, so I'm doing quite good this year. Oh, you're garden. on your way to a salad there. The yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but if you're looking for something to do, there's uh, many events and festivals going on in the area uh, this weekend. Uh, some 5K runs, there's a festival over in Kemp, big car show coming up here in Maybank. And um, while you're out there, be sure and look for one of your local Cobalt Banker agents. They're going to be out and about this weekend there. Yeah, we're going to have several agents out and about at the different shows uh, over there in camp at the car show. So uh, look for us and just uh, say hi. We're, we're uh, nice people to meet. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, this morning we were going to be speaking about surveyors. Uh, regrettably, our guest had to... Um, they were kind of busy right now with all the properties moving in the area and stuff, so we're going to have to reschedule that, but mm -hmm. we'll be sure and uh, let you know whenever we can get them rescheduled to come in here and give us a little bit more information about what's going on with uh, surveys. Yeah, because we really want to really hear it from the surveyor, um, the details you need to know about, about your survey and how you go about things you should pay attention to, questions you should ask your surveyor that you may not think to ask them, and they've been in the business a long time, so um, they've kind of gone, uh, not necessarily blind, but you know, they're in it day, day, day in, day out, they're professional, and so they're not necessarily thinking about some questions that uh, you may have. Mm -hmm. so. But we'll let you know whenever we get that scheduled and upcoming again. So uh, this morning we're going to talk a little bit about land. You know, with inventory and our um, interest rates being so low right now coupled with the amount of people that are moving into the area not just from other parts of the state but a big influx from out west coming into our area um, it really has made finding a home a little bit more difficult right now so what a lot of people are doing is looking for land to either be able to spread out a little bit more get away from the big city type of living or for maybe doing a new build type of package and so um, if you're looking to get a piece of land uh, for either one of these reasons, we want to start off with uh, the difference between what is a lot uh, compared to maybe some acreage. Yeah, so a lot um, is typically in a subdivision. A subdivision may have uh, a property owner's association with it that may have or may not have uh, restrictions on top of that. But a subdivision is where a surveyor comes out with the developer and they establish lot boundaries. They go ahead and, I guess you'd say, pre-survey it mm -hmm. off. Um, here's lot A, here's B, here's C, here's one, here's two, here's three. Here's the diameter, and they try to give more uniformity to these lots. And so it's already mapped out before you, before you purchase. And as it conveys time and time again over the decades and, and centuries, there's records of these plats with the county, and so it's already preformed, laid out, uh, you know pretty well what you're, what you're purchasing, how houses are going to set in a uniform pattern. Um, the utility easements are already laid out. The, the places for the roads to go in are already mapped out and established. Um, and it's, it's a bit easier for surveyors to survey it time and time again each time it, each time it sells uh, to make sure nobody's built over and encroached on a piece of land. Yeah, you're talking about being platted out. I know especially over here in Kaufman County, the, this past year, some of the rules have been changed on platting. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in splitting up some land that you may have had for a while, mm -hmm. you may want to check with the county first about yeah. how you would have to go about getting it separated like that. Yeah, especially whenever you're uh, splitting up below 10 acres. Um, there's some new rules, new regulations with that, so check with the county. Um, also check with an, indep an independent surveyor too, because you want, you want both that, um, the government opinion and you want the, 
the uh, private industry opinion on something and make sure it matches up before you spend your hard earned nickels on something and then you find out after you've gone through a lot of effort and a lot of time that no, the county's going to restrict you from doing that. Or you thought you were restricted, but actually you can do it this other way you were planning on doing it in the first place. Yeah, and you were talking about getting the survey to start with there. Mm -hmm. I, that's one thing we always want to stress when you're purchasing a piece of land is mm -hmm. make sure you go and get that survey to establish these boundaries. Uh, don't take uh, the word for whoever has been there, they may have had this property for generations or some of these lake additions, you know, they've, they've passed down, mm -hmm. um, may have not been surveyed correctly to start with. So you want to make sure that you're actually buying the land. Yeah, in a, in a purchase and sell contract these days, there's three primary ways in which a survey is negotiated. Um, first off, they put this first on the list, so I'll just go in order the way they, they do it, is through what they call a T47 affidavit. And what that allows for is if the seller has a previous survey and nothing has changed on the survey since they had it done, um, they can fill out this T47 form in front of a notary, um, notarize it saying that, and they can then give that survey to the buyer, to the title company, to the lender. If the lender and the title company agree and the buyer agrees to it, um, that, that works there. Um, the second option is for the seller at the seller's expense to get a new survey. So um, you're buying the property, but you're having the seller hire the surveyor and the seller pay for it. Um, if I'm a buyer, you know, it's probably going to be kosher, you know, most of the time. My preferred option, now this is, I'm just going to speak as me in my real estate transactions. Your situation may or may not be the same. But here's what I, I like to do when I purchase property. Anytime that I purchase property, the land that whatever structure is sitting on or not, no structure, whatever, the land is of my primary concern. That's what I'm buying first and foremost. I can build a bigger house. I can get rid of the house that's there. I can put up fences. I can do all that. Yeah, I mean, but, if the, the house you may be purchasing on that land. Yeah. It may go away eventually, but yeah. the dirt will still be there. Yeah, um, not much new dirt being created <laughs> these days. So uh, I want to know where my property starts and where my property ends. And I like to be in control of that a little bit more rather than leaving that in the hands of a surveyor who may not be in business anymore, may not even be alive anymore, and we're getting a notarized affidavit on somebody that's not even around that can back up their survey, so I don't like I don't like that option as a as an individual if I'm buying, and um, as trustworthy as most sellers are, um, I don't want the seller determining my survey. I'm the one that's going to now live with this property. They've lived with it, they've enjoyed it. Now I want to live with it and enjoy it. So my preferred method is that I, at my expense, hire the surveyor of my choice with my money. There's nobody. Nobody affecting it. I'm going to deal directly with the surveyor I want. I'm going to purchase the one at the price that I feel is comfortable for me, and I'm going to approve that survey. Yeah, and especially, you know, like you're talking about, these sellers are usually trustworthy, but being here in East Texas, I know a lot of people measure things in different ways, mm -hmm. and they'll say just over yonder that, that big tree or down mm -hmm. to the creek about halfway through it. And Which they're, they're being completely honest. They're mm -hmm. the... They've owned the property. That's where their boundaries have been. That's what they've known for, for years. Um, but, you know, you have some stuff, like if you go back, even though they're, good, they're being completely honest with you, they're not trying to do anything. They're good people. But my dad told me about a thing years ago while I was growing up, and it used to make me giggle. <laughs> and so uh, I always thought it was funny until I actually was down at the county one day and I was looking through the public records on a piece of property, and I found it. There it was. A survey. Well, the survey notes. These days, a lot of your surveys, they use meets and bounds. You know, they measure things in feet. We're not on the metric system here, so we don't have that privilege. You know, you're getting feet. You're getting degrees of angles. Um, you're getting actual, um, the U.S. Geological Survey landmarks out there, reference points, everything. Well, here it was, mule gates and cigarettes. So one way they used to survey off large tracts of land was you'd have 
Farmer Joe's helper out here, and he'd get the mule by the reins and start walking and counting the gates on that mule. Mm -hmm. And he would count them until the corner, and then he'd turn, and he'd go up here to the river. And it would just be this many mule gates here, and then to the river. But they wouldn't put how many mule gates to the river. And rivers change flow, so over the years, that river moved to the left and to the right. Or, you know, they'd have their... They'd have their guy, and he would start, you know, enjoying his his little vice there, and he'd count how many of them that he enjoyed while while he was walking, and there is the distance, not in feet, not in inches, not in meters, not in kilometers, not in any of that, but here you go. How many how many steps does the mule make? Well, you need something a little bit more up to date and um on the record than that, you know, we don't really want a T-47 over a mule gate to these days. So you want to be sure that you have that survey done. Yeah, yeah. I, I would hate to say, I, I would want mine in feet rather than depending on a seller maybe coming up with a short mule for measuring my property. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because, um, yeah, uh, what do they measure mules and horses in hands? Yes. So so if I got a short-handed mule with a shorted mule gate, um, you know, I might be missing a, a corner or two of my property there, so I want I want to be sure that I have a high-handed mule with a with a pretty open gate, not a not a limp hoof out there. So, yeah, um, we don't have much time today, so I just want to kind of skip ahead. And one of the most prevalent questions that come up this week is, how do I know if my land can be split? Mm. Uh, if you're talking about a acreage tract that goes into those county restrictions so it's going to change um, whether you're in Henderson, Van Zandt, Kaufman County but even uh, then within the county even if the county allows certain things if you have an acreage tract say like in a city like in Tool or Seven Points they may have additional um, requirements that they put on you and say you can only divide your land like this. Well then you get into subdivisions. Now some subdivisions in their bylaws and guidelines the lots are what the lots are, and you can get a lot, and you can get another lot, and you can build a house on lot A and a house on lot B. Some subdivisions will allow you to tie lots together. So I want to build a bigger house, I can tie lot one, two, and three together. Uh, we have a subdivision around here that back in the day when it was laid out, you might have to buy four, five, six, seven, eight lots to put a single wide on it. They were teeny tiny, and uh, they were done that way intentionally. And so people weren't building, you know, 5,000, 6,000 square feet houses on lots at that time, so they were little. Um, so you had to join them together to put a structure on there. So then there's can you, un, can you separate them back out if you need to, or can you take a large lot that was say like an acre or two lot, um, and this is a lot, not a just a platted county acreage tract, and will that subdivision allow you to split it into two lots now so you can build two houses on it or three or four. Um, you'll want to look at the Property Owners Association uh, guidelines, their current up-to-date ones. You'll want to look at the bylaws of that subdivision. Um, the county is going to make a difference in that whether you're in Henderson County, Dallas County, Kaufman County. Um, your surveyor is always one of your best places to start with that. Your surveyors are up-to-date. They're out there in the field. They're dealing with these notes and they have a pretty good sense of depending on which which subdivision you're talking about, which acreage tract, on what you may or may not be able to do as far as dividing that or joining that together with something else. That's some really good information. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we got a chance here, I want to get to a couple properties that okay. have some acreage out here for people that might be interested in looking at some of this. And our first one is over here at 3651 Southwest Loop 7 in Athens. Um, you can look out over the countryside from this elevated acreage on the corner of Loop 7 and County Road 1504. It's a beautiful property with a lot of possibilities. Uh, just under 24 acres over there. Um, this, part, this property can be split into two 12-acre 12, 12 tracks if one desired. Um, it's got nice gated entry, mature trees, several cut-ins from the loop, and um, just south of Highway 31 gives you good access to downtown Athens or Malakoff. And that's going for two hundred and eighty-four thousand today. Okay, that's a that's a good purchase. That's one to go and look at, and and if you're looking for something, really really take a look at that. Okay, and uh, 
If I can get one more out there, we've got one over here at Seven Points at 516 County Road 2404. It's uh, just northwest of Seven Points. It's a gorgeous, large acre tract. Um, you know, you can escape from the big city crowds here to this nice secluded oasis. It's got new steel fencing that flanks the entrance to this beautiful 57.4 acre property. You can follow the winding road through the mature trees until you reach a real nice clearing that's really suitable for running your livestock or maybe doing one of these new builds we were talking about. Uh, electrical service recently ran about 200 feet onto the property. The property is completely fenced and you can feel like a million miles away from nowhere while still easily accessible to seven points and less than an hour drive to Dallas. Mm. You can get this today for only 315700 Ooh, Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're looking for a place, that's a, that's a good buy at that price right mm -hmm. there. Okay, so if they're wanting to get a hold of you today, Brett, how do they get a hold of you? Well, as always, you can give me a call or a text anytime at 903-340-6301. Or you can get a hold of me, Shy, at 903-340-6159. Or give our office today a call at 903-887-7055, and one of our great agents will take care of you. All right. Thanks for having us, John. i got to steal my mic back. All right, folks, you are listening to 95.9 KCKL, and we will be back shortly with some more great country music, so stick around.